Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to start the build of this frame here. Now, this is the Bolt RC Kraken 5 Works Frame WORX. And as you can see, I've already started putting a couple of things together, but I'll show you the steps I've gone through. Now, we looked at this frame originally about six, seven weeks ago now. And the reason for the delay is I've been waiting to get hold of all the right bits and pieces to make a really nice build. Now, before I go any further, I need to say a very big thank you to Bolt RC, who have been working with DroneBit.co.uk. And DroneBit is the only reseller in the UK at the moment that you can get all of this technology from. So what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below. And if you're interested in following along, getting these bits and building one of these yourself, you absolutely can. Now, this frame is a little bit different, if you haven't already spotted. There is a top deck as such, there is a polycarbonate frame. And you get two of these polycarbonate frames in the kit. One is a 1mm, which is this one, which is quite flexible. The other one is a 1.5mm, which is exactly the same kind of thing, but quite a bit tougher. You'll notice that none of it is drilled at all. There are little indents that show you where you have to put the drill through to make the holes for the bolts that are going to connect it onto the frame. There's also a place to mount your FPV transmitter. You can either put it here or some people have it sticking out the back on top of the XT60. The bit at the front where the camera looks through isn't cut out at all. That needs to be done. And there's also two additional pieces here that you need to drill out for the anodized aluminium strut that goes inside that actually supports the camera inside the frame itself. So in this video let me just talk about what I've done to get to this point here because the next video then is where we're going to connect the flight controller and all the other pieces up as well. Now I've spoken to quite a few pilots who have actually built one of these things and they tend to all have their own particular favourite way of putting it together. So this is by no means a version of the build that's supposed to be the ultimate. This just happens to be the one that's going to suit how I want to build it, the components I want to use and how I want to fly. So the first thing you need to think about is the flight component choice. Now there's actually more room under this canopy. If I just pop an image up here, there's easily behind the camera mount about 15 to 16 millimeters of height. And that's pretty typical for the majority of the smaller frames that we're building these days. And you've also got the ability to mount things and stick things on the underside of this plastic canopy. So there's actually more room in here than you might think. But you need to be a little bit careful and think about the flight controller that you're going to use. Now I've put quite a bit of thought into the flight controller choice. First I was going to use something like race flight board but had lots of problems and lots of my friends who fly and race have had quads fall out the air with those. I had to put lots of capacitors on to try and protect it from those kind of failures and that would look particularly horrific underneath this canopy. Then I've been thinking about using one of the new FR Sky flight control boards. The New boards from FR Sky are very, very nice indeed, but they haven't put a lot of external UARTs on them. So that's a bit of a problem because the other thing I need to be aware of, of course, is once the top's on here, I'm not really going to be able to get at anything. I'll probably end up cutting a hole to access the USB port for the flight controller, but I'm not going to be able to get in here to press buttons to change VTX channel, bands and power settings. So it all needs to be done through the on-screen display in Betaflight. So that means I'm going to have to use something like a Tramp, a TBS, or one of the new Hollybro Atlatl HV units in here to do my video transmitter. And that's why I've come to this decision. I'm actually going to use a Kakute flight controller, the F4, not the all-in-one I have here. I've got an F4 one coming. That's going to be underneath. And I'm also going to use the Atlatl HV FPV transmitter in conjunction with it as well. Now that stack is easily going to fit underneath the space that I've got in here and should give me room on top to potentially mount the XSR radio receiver that I'm going to need as well. Camera, you need to think about the camera type. Ideally you want the connector for the camera coming out the top. Uh, it can come out of either side actually but I know some pilots have struggled and look for cameras where you can actually flip the image. I'm not sure yet. I might use one of these Foxeer cameras. Uh, these are the new ones that I'm testing out at the moment and they're a nice size. I like the kind of anodized look. 
I might end up sticking a run cam here instead. I haven't quite yet decided. The actual bracket itself is designed to screw into the back of a camera, but you can easily use a double-sided foam to mount the camera on it as well if those holes don't line up. ESCs, I have opted to go, as you've probably already spotted, have the ESCs out on the arms. The reason for that is um, I just like ESCs out on the arms. Um, it's better probably in terms of flipping and rolling to have all the mass as close to the centre of the body as you can. And lots of other pilots are running four in one ESCs underneath the flight controller. But because the stack that I'm going to use, I probably don't have space for that. You also need to think about the ESCs that you're after because these lovely thin arms, what you really want is you want the ESCs to be as thin as is possible. Otherwise, it's going to spoil the look of the entire frame. Again, I'll put a link to the description to the ESCs that I'm using down below in case you want the same ones. The things then you need to think about next is the voltages that you're going to need on your craft. Now, there are lots of voltages presented on here and lots of ways that we can do this. We have the battery and ground pads here, so we can put the full battery voltage into whatever it is that we're going to run. That's going to work great for me because both the Hollybro F4 Kakute board and the Atlatl HV FPV video transmitter will both run directly off the battery, so I don't need to worry about it. If you don't do anything else, this PCB upper, and this is the way you mount it, because all the positive connections are here on the top. There's a big, solid, positive plate that runs all on the top, and the bottom is all of the negative connections for the ESC. It also, on board, has an 8-volt regulator as well, and it presents those 8 volts in a couple of places here on these couple of pads, and also up here as well. Now that would allow you to run cameras and video transmitters and things like that that will be happy on those kind of eight volts. The other thing you can do is you can install using a Palulu, you can install that using four pins in these four pins here at the top and that Palulu will then output five volts and then those five volts are available through those front two pins. So if you didn't have a flight controller that had an onboard regulator and needed five volts to run, then that's the way to handle that. So there are lots of different choices for voltage on here as well. That's pretty straightforward stuff. So let me just talk about the trick for building the arms. Um, the way these motors come, and again, these are the bolt motors. These are actually the 2206 2350 kV motors. They only have two connectors, which fits beautifully into the arms, just the two bolts. The bolts actually come uh, in the kit that's long enough uh, that go all the way through these nice, thick, composite arms. You can see just have the right amount of clearance for the motor, so beautifully done. Um, and then what I've done is used a little heat gun to soften up this heat shrink and the wires so that I could bend them round, because originally out at 90 degrees, that way you can bend them round I've popped the ESCs on the bottom, held them in place with a bit of double-sided tape while I did all of the soldering. And once the soldering's done, put this kind of shiny heat shrink over the top. Uh, again, I'll put a link to the description. I got this stuff off eBay. Big thank you to Jack from Let's Drone Out, who also sent me some stuff as well while I was waiting for that eBay stuff to arrive. And that's going to keep these ESCs in place and hopefully keep them more or less out of harm's way. The XT60 connector, uh, ideally put it on like this, then it's out the way of the back of the canopy. Hopefully you can see that there. You don't want a particularly long flying lead, you want to keep the weight down because this is going to be a racing machine. And I have managed to get it, so this is actually 16 gauge wire and it just fits through the holes here for the power and make sure that you're absolutely getting the polarity the right way around. So. Join me in the next build video. What we're going to do then is we're going to get the flight controller and we're going to get the FPV transmitter. We'll make the holes in this canopy. Uh, you're going to have to have a sacrificial soldering iron tip really. You don't want to be drilling this because there's a big problem potentially with micro cracks. So if you did drill it, you also then have to kind of melt the edges with a soldering iron to stop any of those micro cracks following around in the event of a crash or with the vibration. But join me in the next video where we're actually going to put all the electronics on here and do all the soldering and then take it for a fly.
Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organised into easy to use playlists so do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject we organise all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.